Hi guys, Mary Beth Olson here of MBO Media. I am so excited to have Tracy McCorder here. She's an award-winning public health nutritionist and the author of By Any Greens Necessary and Ageless Vegan. Tracy is a longtime activist and she's the creator of 10,000 Black Vegan Women. Tracy, thank you so much for doing this today. Hey, Mary Beth, it's great to be here with you. It's great to see you today, as always. You too, you too, always. Always. So tell us why and when you decided to go vegan. Yeah, definitely. Well, first I want to say, because this is for Earth Day um, and we're talking about all the connections, um, uh, you know, around Earth Day and climate change, I want to acknowledge that, you know, we in this country, in the United States, are on stolen land, stolen indigenous land um, and European colonizers, when they came here 400 years ago, there was no climate crisis, right? So this is a phenomenon that um, was not, that, that did not exist, was not here 400 years ago. And I think that we need to acknowledge that um, when we talk about Earth Day, that on this part of the earth, you know, this did not exist. And it is existing here for us because of that um, colonization. So having said that, to answer your question, and, and it is it is obviously connected. Um, I uh, went vegan um, 34 years ago, and I went vegan unexpectedly. Um, my sophomore year at Amherst College, our Black Student Union brought Dick Gregory to campus to talk about the state of Black America. Instead, he talked about the plate of Black America and how unhealthfully most folks eat. This was 1986. And Gregory had already been vegan for 20 years because he was a right-hand person to Dr. King during the civil rights movement. And he extended the practice of nonviolence to include compassion for animals in 65, and then to include his own personal health in 67 because of the uh, support um, he got from Dr. Alvinia Fulton at the time. And so by the time he got to my campus in 1986, he'd been vegan for 20 years, as I said. And so he talked about all of the reasons that Black folks in particular should go vegan. And I won't get into some of the graphic details he shared, but it completely rocked my world because I was a budding activist at the time. And um, after doing my own research for about a year or so, I decided to go vegetarian first and then vegan and uh, encourage my mother and one of my sisters to go with me. So it's been about 34 years since then. Oh my gosh. And who would have known that that would be, not only were you inspiring your mother and your sister to also become vegan, but now you've created this program called 10 vegan women and you're inspiring thousands and thousands of women to go vegan each and every day so tell us what inspired that thank you so i wrote my first book i should actually go back and say that my my first career was as a museum director but i was doing vegan work with my sister um, from the late 80s through the 90s and i loved that so much when i was doing that when i wasn't working as a museum director that i decided to change careers and um, so, and to write a book about uh, veganism that was targeted to black women because Toni Morrison said, if there's a book that you wanna write, that you wanna read and it hasn't been written yet, then you should write it. And so at the time there were no books. This is the, the late eighties, early uh, to mid nineties. There were no books targeting black women for about veganism. They were all targeting white women. Um, the ones that were targeting women. And so I wrote that book and it was by any greens necessary targeted to black women. And it was the first vegan diet book for black women. Um, and so this is the 10 year anniversary or 2020 last year was the 10 year anniversary of that first book. And so I wanted to do something kind of big and bold to celebrate that 10 year anniversary. And the fact that you know, I have been helping thousands of women to go vegan up until that point. And so I wanted to, so that's why I had the idea to kind of help thousands more, you know, in this one year. And that's why I came up with the idea of 10,000 Black vegan women to help 10,000 women go vegan in one year. And of course, COVID happened, um, but it didn't derail us. It actually kind of put more urgency on the fact that we need to be thinking about our health during a pandemic, but also after, you know, because um, African Americans have 
been so affected by the pandemic that we're three to six times likely to get COVID and twice as likely to die than other Americans. And that's because we have pre-existing preventable primarily diet related chronic diseases. So, uh, you know, it was definitely, you know, just kind of timing that I happened to do it, you know, last year when it was, when it was most urgent to do it as well, I think. Yeah. And not only are you helping these amazing women, but you're also helping the environment. So as it pertains to Earth Month, tell us about that. Absolutely. Well, these are some of the threads that I was talking about that Dick Gregory talked about, you know, back in 1986 on our campus. And it's just, you know, it's all connected. Um, so the fact that um, we have a system that produces animals through factory farming means that the factory farming industry is decimating um, air, uh, decimating land, air, and water, right? Particularly land. So we know that, or people may not know, but hopefully, you know, they will learn more about this, that the reason that um, some of these fires are existing in the Amazon rainforest and other places around the world is that land is being cleared for cattle grazing, mm -hmm. cattle being raised for meat. Meat is unnecessary in the diet, um, but you know, with factory farming and the production of billions of animals, particularly cattle, um, land is required, right? And so that's why land is being destroyed. Uh, water is being destroyed as well because of pollution, because these factory farms all over the world are incredibly damaging, not only from the manure, the poop from all these billions of animals, but just the, the um, the production costs, you know, all of, I mean, it's, it's really devastating. And, you know, there are communities, particularly in this country, low income, primarily um, African American communities down south that are being affected by factory farming of pigs, hog farming, runoffs going into their water. I mean, it's, it's devastating all over the world and particularly in, in the United States. So there's so many reasons why um, deciding to eat more or all vegan food, plant-based foods means that you're not only helping yourself, right? For your own personal health, but you're helping animals and you're helping to mitigate climate change. Eating plant-based foods every single meal, it's the most important thing you can do to decrease your uh, footprint when it comes to the environment and to climate change. Absolutely. And it's, it's really a win-win. I mean, more and more widespread is the belief that we can really take control of our health and we can really help the environment. And what you're doing is affecting generations and generations and generations to come. It's, it's really, really inspiring. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I think, you know, that looking at it as a win, win, win is so important because it has to be more than what we personally do, right? I mean, it's important what we personally do, but it's also, you know, for our health, but it's also about living our values and living our desire to be compassionate and um, to be, you know, kind of um, stewards of the climate, right? And to um, think about how not only what we eat affects our, our own health, but animals, the climate, and people. And I think that one of the things that's not talked about enough is the fact that all of this, you know, corn and soy and other uh, products that are raised for this multi-billion dollar factory farming industry means that those crops are not being given to people who are hungry in the world. And so the more people eat plant-based, the more of these crops can not go to animals, but can actually go to feeding people directly, right? Instead of getting it front through third party through the animals. And so if you're somebody who is concerned about world hunger, that's another reason to go plant-based, to eat more plant-based foods, because that means that there's more grain that will be grown for people instead of animals. So the wins are spectacular. And I really see this as a freedom diet, you know, something that's really liberating, not um, de that's not de deprivation, um, that's not restrictive, actually, because every time that I eat plant-based foods, 
I know that I'm helping myself, animals, the climate, and other people. And how freeing is that, right? That, I mean, that's, that's positive. That's the abundance. That's living my values. And I've been able to do that for 34 years and help other people during those three decades to kind of understand that that's what they could be doing too. I think living your values is such a beautiful way of saying that. And there is such a freedom to choosing the foods that you put on your plate and then seeing the impact that it has on families. Just thinking of those poor families who have who are living the effect of those pig farms and the manure and, and mm -hmm. all of the negative effects that animal agriculture has on our planet. Mm -hmm really mind blowing. Um, but I love that. I love, you know, it's not about deprivation and just look at your amazing cookbook. All these, <laughs> as you can, I'm sure uh, attest there are just, it's just a whole new world of food. It's a whole new world of eating. And really it's the best thing you can do to help the environment, the animals and your health. So exactly. can I, and I just want to just, um, emphasize that also in terms of farm workers, right? So, you know, we have to consider the folks who are working in, uh, in the factory farms that are producing animals for food, right? But we, you know, we also have to think about the farm workers who are growing, who are harvesting, planting and harvesting the plant-based foods that we're eating as well. So um, there is that to consider, right? And so we wanna consider not only when we eat plant-based foods, are we getting it locally? What, what farms are we getting it from? And um, are we able to eat organic if it's affordable, if it's convenient, if it's available, so that these farm workers aren't being sprayed and exposed to pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, and insecticides? So being vegan, eating plant-based foods is a win. Um, but there are ways that you can take it a step further, even within that, right? And that affects the environment. The more pesticides that are sprayed out into the environment, the more harmful it is for the environment, for the other creatures, the insects that, you know, we live with and also for the workers. And so I think that, you know, I just wanted to emphasize that as we talk about Earth Day too, because there, you know, there's so many uh, threads that we can talk about and um, this is an opportunity for us to kind of explore those um, conversations. Yeah, and those workers are exploited, no matter how, how well it seems like they're being treated. I'd say if what, 99% of animals are grown on factory farms, think of all the people who are working in those environments, those high right. environments, they're dangerous. I mean, think of the COVID records and the numbers of workers who got COVID. So you're helping other people by not contributing to that system. Right. And you choose, you know, you choose your, the way that you, you know, if you choose, if you want to be an activist, you, if you want to do something about these kinds of issues, you know, you kind of have to choose what you do, but choose something, you know, so, so choose to eat more plant-based foods. Um, and know that you are addressing these issues already just by doing that. And you can go further, you know, by investigating what else is happening with workers and other, you know, important issues. But, you know, just by choosing to eat more plant-based foods, you are making a difference. Every plant-based meal counts. I love it. So you heard it. It's a win-win-win, guys. Go <laughs> again, go plant-based, add more plant-based options to your plate to save the environment. So Tracy, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. You too, Mary Beth. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Bye. Bye.